I had never been in politics before and I'd never been through a divorce, something I never intended to go through. I've made my own personal mistakes and have owned up and apologized for them. It's tested my faith, my strength, and my abilities, both as a mom and a congresswoman. It's been humbling and challenging, but it's also given me perspective and helped me grow. As you just saw, Congresswoman Lauren Boebert claims that the last year was really difficult for her, and it is understandable as to why she would say that. She not only went through a divorce last year, but she also got caught jerking off her date during a Beetlejuice play. But these mistakes have given her the opportunity to learn and grow, as she claimed in that video. Now, that was a video released on December 27th, where she announced that she's switching districts and addressed her past controversies. But with less than a week into the new year, it's evident that she still has a lot more growing to do because she is now reportedly under investigation by Colorado police for a physical altercation that allegedly occurred between her and her ex-husband at a restaurant in Colorado. Roger Sollenberger of the Daily Beast explains, on Saturday night, three years to the day after supporters of Donald Trump attacked the U.S. Capitol building, election-objecting Representative Lauren Boebert is the subject of an active police investigation into an alleged physical altercation with her ex-husband, Jason Boebert, at a restaurant in her district Saturday night. According to the aide, on Saturday, Jason Bobert had called the police to the Miners Claim restaurant in Silt, claiming that he was a victim of domestic violence. The aide emphasized that Lauren Bobert denies any allegation of domestic violence on her part, and that the events as depicted in social media posts on Saturday were not accurate. An anti bobert super PAC called American Muckrakers first publicized the rumor of the incident on Saturday night in eye-popping posts on X, formerly Twitter. On Sunday, Jason Bobert told the Daily Beast that the details of the altercation on American Muckrakers was accurate and that his ex-wife had punched him in the face multiple times. Jason Bobert also purported to have a witness to the events and said that he took back his claim that police were too aggressive with him. Quote, I respect our officers and appreciate what they have to endure. I shouldn't have said anything negative toward them. I was unhappy. Jason Bobert added that he was going to phone the police and ask them to call off the investigation. So there is a lot to unpack here, and this is actually pretty serious. Now, first and foremost, as much as I enjoy the schadenfreude here, I do sympathize with their children here because they're now going to have to learn that their parents were allegedly in a physical altercation in public, which is probably going to affect them in a negative way for a really long time. So I do feel bad for the children in this situation who have to grow up in that volatile, violent environment. And even though their parents are wealthy and powerful, money can't fix everything. So I do feel really bad for them. Now, in terms of the lead up to the incident, Sollenberger explains in the article that Jason tried to hug her when she arrived at his home to pick up their son. And she kind of stopped him, putting her hand on his chest. He felt bad about that. So he later called her up to apologize and and wanted to meet her at a restaurant to talk and then she agreed to do that and that's when the physical altercation reportedly took place they were apparently arguing and then she alleged that he seemingly was going to grab her based on emotion that he made this is all in the article if you want to read it and that's when she allegedly punched him and he subsequently called the police and claimed that he's the victim of domestic violence. She claims that it was self-defense because of his demeanor and what he was seemingly going to do, grab her. But I mean, here's her response because they're both making these claims. This is a he said, she said situation, and we're really not going to know who's guilty based on what they're just saying. We have to see what the evidence says. But in her response, she's denying any wrongdoing. Quote, in an official statement to the Daily Beast on Sunday, Lauren Boebert said, this is a sad situation for all that keeps escalating and another reason, I'm moving. I didn't punch Jason in the face and no one was arrested. I will be consulting with my lawyer about the false claims he made against me and evaluate all of my legal options. So first of all, it is weird that she claims she's moving, meaning she's switching districts because of her ex. I feel like that's not a good reason to switch districts like you can move 
to a different area in your district. It's a very large district. So that's kind of weird that you're like basically subjecting your constituents to this because of your own personal problems. But th putting that aside, she is making an implicit threat here to file a defamation suit against him, which might kind of explain why he's trying to call out the investigation into her. Because if they do determine that his claims are untrue, that could bolster a potential defamation suit. So I don't know. This is just speculation. But it is impossible to know who's actually telling the truth here because we all know that Lauren Boebert is a compulsive liar, but her ex-husband isn't a good person either, and he has a history of domestic violence. In 2004, he was actually arrested for harassing and physically assaulting his then-girlfriend, and in the same year, he was arrested for exposing himself at a bowling alley while him and Boebert were dating, and she was a minor then, by the way, and even though she saw the incident, she denies it. So even though she is a liar, I think that given his history of domestic violence, violence, I think it's reasonable for her to perceive his body language in a violent way if she is indeed telling the truth. But regardless of who's in the right here, Lauren Boebert has made it very clear that all of these personal issues aside, she is not qualified to be a member of Congress. Put aside this, put aside the Beetlejuice incident, this is somebody who has no core political beliefs. She's just a hate monger and a racist. And what's crazy is that she managed to turn off even the most diehard Trump supporters who are growing disillusioned with her. And I say this because Ryan Biller of Politico published a lengthy piece about how some of her far right constituents were just tired of her antics and felt like she was out of touch with the district. And let me just say this. I do find it funny whenever Republican voters feel buyer's remorse for the politicians that they elect because they keep electing these elitist blowhards who tell you that they're not going to do shit for you and then when they get elected they don't do shit but then they act surprised still and outraged now i say this because one of bobert's constituents that biller the author of that political article i just referenced talked to turned on her because of a fox news appearance where she complained about covid masks saying quote i still blame biden and the democrats for the skyrocketing costs reed explained of course you do but i got a weird sort of feeling when bobert was ranting about masks because by that point masks were irrelevant here what mattered was the cost of gas and food and rent it seemed she was out of touch. Now, this quote is interesting because it comes from a quintessential MAGA chud. The article says that she has a Let's Go Brandon bumper sticker and even has a dartboard with Biden's face on it. And I mean, talk about virtue signaling. But she's mad that Boebert wasn't focusing on the issues that mattered to her economic issues. Now, I'm glad to see anecdotes of her constituents turning on her because that's good. She's a bad person and a bad representative. But I've just got to go back to the constituent here. What exactly did this person expect? Lauren Boebert ran on nothing and delivered exactly what she ran on. Nothing. This isn't a situation like Pennsylvanians voting for John Fetterman, where he ran as a progressive and then turned into a Republican a year later. She came exactly as advertised. She is a vapid racist conspiracy theorist who doesn't care about her constituents. So I just find it insulting and annoying to see some of her constituents, of all people, exhibit buyer's remorse after they thrusted her upon us. I mean, if you are surprised that she turned out to be a know-nothing dumbass, then that says a lot about you and not just about Lauren Boebert. Now, as much as I'm sick and tired of these fascist Republican politicians, they keep getting elected because that's what the Republican base wants. The base is hungry for virtue signaling ideologues who hate democracy and love fascism. And the party is reflective of that, hence why there's so many of them in power. But I mean, with that being said... I still hope she loses her election. I just find it insufferable to hear her constituents bitch about her after they voted her in office. Now, to be fair, that person in particular quoted in that article voted for the Democrat for the first time in their lives uh, in 2022. So they didn't vote for her again. But still, I mean, it's not like she changed that much, much since she was elected. So it's just insufferable. I mean, if you vote for a dumbass like Lauren Boebert, don't be surprised when she turns out to be exactly what she said she was and appeared to be. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a fucking duck. And by duck, I mean fascist election denier. But with that being said, I genuinely hope that Boebert loses her election because the less insufferable freaks that we have in power, the better off our country will be. But like, even if this one Republican is defeated in 2024, that doesn't mean like the problem of fascism is gone, obviously. Obviously, it'd be nice to just have like one less fascist than power, but we'll leave that there.
business. <laughs> 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 Vagina. <laughs> <laughs>